out on the range raising money for high schoolers. Plus, we've got ourselves a bit of a warm and somewhat breezy day ahead of thunderstorm chances as we head into the evening and overnight hours. We'll have a look at that forecast to get you out the door coming up. Plus, we'll see how one Kansas team good weather to run for a good cause. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states. Welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It is now 6 a.m. and 43 seconds. I'm Chris Warner, and it is Monday here in the four states. It is Monday, April the 15th. Some information you may need because I asked earlier, I said, what day is it? Because there was something I needed to know, and they're all just like, oh, I don't know. And then one just said Monday, and I'm like, that's... I mean, not like I knew, so I can't say anything, okay, because I didn't know either, but I'm like, I need to know the day, the specific day. That's how you know it's Monday for sure, though, because you don't even know what day of the week it is yet. But it is the 15th, and we do have ourselves an opportunity for some strong, potentially severe thunderstorms, and we're looking at the possibility as well of two potential rounds of these strong to severe thunderstorms. Let's start with a look outside from our camera on top of the Cornell Complex in downtown Joplin. As you can see, a few clouds out there right now, getting a little daylight as we get closer to sunrise. However, clouds are going to increase, and they're starting to roll in from the south and west, and we are looking at a mostly cloudy to just plain old cloudy day out there. Our camera 7th and range line also looking pretty good so far this morning. We're dry and we're calm for the time being, but that is going to change. Here's a look at our severe threats as we head into the evening hours. So again, day one, which is what this encompasses, does go in to about 1, 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. We do have a low to elevated tornado risk, again, primarily across Kansas and Oklahoma. We have a low to elevated hail and low to elevated wind risk with the elevated risks across southeastern Kansas. And then these risks will actually shift east as we go overnight and into our Tuesday. Right now, the primary concern is going to be with wind and hail. However, as highlighted, an isolated tornado or two cannot be ruled out. What we're looking at in terms of timing for this evening is between roughly 5 and 9 p.m. These are going to be isolated to widely scattered storms out there, but the ones we see will be an environment that is favorable for them to be strong, potentially severe. So we're going to keep a close eye on that for you. Then we'll get another round tomorrow morning, and we'll talk about that with your full forecast here a little later. 64 in Joplin right now, 63 in Pittsburgh. All of us well above average as we are in the low to mid 60s across the area. In fact, take a look a little further west. Neotache Chanute Yates Center is starting to get into the upper 60s range. So kids getting on the bus other than just clothes. They're not going to need a jacket or anything. Partly cloudy skies, 63. South breeze at 5 to 10. Those clouds increase. Will be mostly cloudy to just plain old cloudy by this afternoon. But look at that, too. 86 for our high. South breeze 10 to 15 with occasional gusts to 25. And the winds will really begin to pick up as we head into the afternoon. Highs today, again, mid 80s. This evening, a few scattered showers and storms. Some of those could be strong, potentially severe. So we're going to keep a close eye on that for you. And otherwise, mostly cloudy. A across the area today and the clouds are going to be a factor in terms of what we see this evening and overnight and just how severe the storms get. So it's something else we'll have to keep a close eye on. And again, more details on that here in just a few minutes. Now to today's top stories, around 20 train cars went off the tracks in a derailment in Wyandotte Saturday evening. The derailment blocked Main Street and East 153rd Road in Wyandotte. No one was hurt in the crash. Numerous area agencies responded to help. The BNSF train appeared to be hauling railroad ties traveling west from Missouri into Oklahoma. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly vetoes a bill to ban gender affirming care from transgender youth. The bill would restrict the use of puberty blockers, which trans minors may use to delay development of gendered characteristics. Puberty blockers are reversible. In her veto message, the Democrats said the bill, quote, targets a small group of Kansans by placing government mandates on them and dictating to parents how to best raise and care for their children, end quote. However, the Republican controlled House and Senate may have the votes to override the veto. Of course, to be the first to see breaking news and weather and sports, you can download the KOAM News app. It's available free of charge in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. All you have to do is search for KOAM News Now. 
local nonprofit hosted a shooting competition to raise money for its mission of reaching out to high school students. The 8th annual Poll for Young Life brought shooters to the Shawnee Skies range in Wyandotte to compete for prizes. Prizes were awarded to the top three teams as well as the top three individual shooters. All of the money raised supports the efforts of Southwest Missouri Young Life. They've got aspirations for the future and we're trying to help them help them, you know, see that and help them along the way, you know, and be of any kind of support we can to them. And, uh, you know, I think that's what it's all about is being here for each other. And there was also a raffle for an over under shotgun. Well, saddle up. Great American Pony Drive made a stop in Joplin Sunday. Now, these aren't real ponies, but they have quite a few under the hood. A group of Ford Mustang enthusiasts celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Ford Mustang by taking a trip across Route 66. Their journey started in Oklahoma City, made its way through Miami, Baxter Springs, and Galena before stopping at the Joplin City Hall. It's a, it's a neat thing for people as as they're driving by you know they're double taken it's like look at all those cars um, we've seen people uh, video and uh, as, as we drive by and taking pictures it's a big deal it's it's fun the club of cars spent the night in Joplin before continuing their trip which will end in Chicago well, one Kansas teen used Sunday's good weather to run for a cause. The KOM Samantha Walker has more on how a class assignment is helping to support individuals with spinal injuries. Labette Community College student Cass Lewis is doing more than just writing papers for class. For an assignment for his public relations class, he organized the Wheelie Fun Run fundraiser. I'll be running for an hour and people have pledged donations, uh, given donations flat out, um, and I'm just gonna run as much as I can. <laughs> Funds raised will support a newly formed nonprofit called Live With It. The organization supports individuals with spinal cord injuries and paralysis. So I've lived through that for the last 33 years, and uh, we know there's just a lot of challenges that come along with uh, being um, being paralyzed and so we want to just be there as a support and a resource uh, for those people who have similar similar challenges. Live With It founder Kevin Olson is Cass's uncle. Cass says the cause hits close to home. I've just seen how he lives with it and how he lives a good life. I hardly ever hear, never actually have heard him complain um, and I think that it's important for people to have the opportunity to live the life they want to live, even with their disabilities. Cass's public relations instructor came out to support her student, even running a lap with him. She says it's great to be able to see a student's work come to life in this way. Well, I always encourage students again to pick topics or, or pick causes that are near and dear to them and so to have a, a student be able to bring a community together and raise money for such a good cause that makes me pretty proud to be you know teaching Cass and, and all my PR students. And for the running teen, something that started as a class project became something so much more meaningful. It makes me feel really good. Um, with a small town like this, a lot of people know Kevin. He speaks at a lot of different places, even outside of town, outside of state even. And to see this many people care is, uh, it's really awesome. I'm really glad to see people uh, taking part in their community and stuff like this. I'm glad to be a part of it. In total, Cass ran 22 laps, raising roughly $2,500. Reporting in Oswego, Samantha Walker, KOM News. Certainly an impressive feat there. Donations can still be made to the Teens Fundraiser. You can learn more about the organization and how to make a donation on our website at koamnewsnow.com. And that is a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes. Still coming up on the KOAM Morning News. Today is the last day eligible Verizon wireless users could sign up for, a, for money from a legal settlement. Plus, the first criminal trial for former President Donald Trump begins today in Manhattan with jury selection and we'll return with another look at your forecast including those storm chances you're watching the koam morning news we'll be right back shelter a basic necessity of all details 
Top a nation watch this morning. Today is the last day eligible Verizon wireless users could sign up for money from a legal settlement. The funds are for customers who use Verizon services between January of 2016 and November of last year. They can get up to $100 by signing up online or through the mail. The lawsuit alleges Verizon deceptively charged fees, which the company denies. People who accept the payouts lose any right to sue Verizon over the issues in the future. The Rust movie Armorer, convicted of involuntary manslaughter, will soon find out her punishment. A judge in New Mexico will sentence Hannah Gutierrez Reed today. A jury found her guilty last month for the onset shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Her job as armorer made her responsible for gun safety and storage on the set. Somehow, Gutierrez, uh, Gutierrez Reed placed a live bullet in a prop gun Alec Baldwin was holding and the weapon was discharged. Hutchins died and the film's director also was shot but survived. She faces up to 18 months in prison and a $5,000 fine. Prosecutors have asked the judge to give her the maximum. They say she has not taken any responsibility for her actions. While the defense has argued she should receive probation because she has no prior criminal history. The first criminal trial for former President Donald Trump begins today in Manhattan with jury selection. Former President will be in court every day as he faces dozens of counts of falsifying business records, including claims that he tried to hide alleged hush money payments to an adult film star. CBS News' Naomi Ruckham has more on what to expect from outside the courthouse in Manhattan. When I walk into that courtroom, I know I will have the love of 200 million Americans behind me. Today, Donald Trump becomes the first former U.S. president to face trial in a criminal case in Manhattan. Have a good time watching. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records, including claims that he covered up $130,000 in hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels through his former fixer Michael Cohen in order to hide an alleged previous relationship with Daniels ahead of the 2016 presidential election. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. Trump denies the encounter and has pleaded not guilty to the charges. Presiding Judge Juan Mershon has placed a gag order on Trump after he's made public comments bashing the judge, prosecutors, and Cohen. I will be forced to sit fully gagged. I'm not allowed to talk. First up today is jury selection. Legal experts say it could take weeks to cut a pool of hundreds of potential jurors down to just 12 plus alternates. Ultimately, there is no one who is going to enter that courthouse who doesn't have an opinion about Donald Trump. And that's why some legal experts say that Trump's lawyers are likely to file a motion to try to move the trial to another city. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Now, potential jurors must answer a lengthy questionnaire of 42 questions asking things like if they've ever attended a Trump rally or if they follow the former president on social media. That's a look at some of today's top national stories. Now we're going to take a quick look at that forecast, starting with a look at the Skywatch Storm Tracker. The Skywatch Storm Tracker showing us those clouds. We told you it's going to get cloudy today, and they are beginning to roll in from the south and west out there. No rain or anything like that now. We'll stay dry for most of the day. Here's another view of some of those clouds as we get a little more daylight from our camera at 7th and Range Line. We're having another look at your forecast, including that severe threat when the KOAM Morning News returns. Welcome back. Lori Horton joining us in the studio today to teach us how to make her copycat star crunch treats. So when I first saw this in our little playlist, I wasn't exactly sure what that meant. And I think I'm going to find out. You're going to find out. We go back to Little Debbie, our inspiration today. We love Little oh, Debbie. Those are, oh, we These do. These are a classic. A lot of people think, okay, what, what's in the Star Crunch? It's it's delicious, but what's in there? Essentially, it's a Rice Krispie treat. Okay. Who knew? So, well, now we know. Now we know. <laughs> Now, I'll ask, have you ever made Rice Krispie Treats? I don't make a lot of things. I'm not allowed to answer. cook. So. Right. So, Rice Krispie Treats are basically butter and marshmallows and Rice Krispies. Okay. So, we're going to expand on that by making them chocolate and caramel. 
Okay. But we have to be a little bit patient with this one because there are some steps involved and there's a reason. So I'm going to start with a whole stick of butter. It's tax day, so we don't have to make health food, right? That's, yeah, yeah. Right. It's yeah. tax day. We don't tax need to make healthy day. stuff today. People Nobody, are going to need, need something sweet. We something need to relieve sweet. that stress. So <laughs> we start with that whole stick of butter, and then this is where you can get the kids involved because we're going to add some caramels to okay. that. The fun of this is you get to unwrap all of these one by one. So <laughs> That's where the kids get involved. <laughs> or my whole Sunday. Either way. <laughs> So we're going to unwrap all of those caramels. You can buy the caramel bits also if you're lucky and the grocery store has them. I was not. Okay, so, so you got the joy of uh, I these. I got the okay, joy of I unwrapping. Got you. We're going to add that whole entire bag of caramels to that as well. But the secret is we really have to keep this on a low, low heat because we don't want to scorch that. We just want to melt it really slowly. We're going to add to it an entire bag of chocolate chips and whatever kind you want. I like mine a little bit you know, really get that good chocolate flavor. So yeah. you know, splurge, go for the good Hershey's chocolate chips, the milk chocolate, they're delicious. Add that in there. And then this is just a quarter of a cup of milk. And when we bake, when we cook, we always want to remember to use whole milk because you want, again, it's not health food. We want all the fat in there. Right, really right. And then just go slow. And this is going to take probably a good five to 10 minutes to melt. Okay. Because those caramels are solid and we want to keep it on a low heat so we don't scorch anything. We don't burn anything. But you'll notice I didn't add any marshmallows yet. No, 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 there are no marshmallows no in marshmallows here. There's no marshmallows yet. They, are, they here, are here, but they are not in there. <laughs> They're not in there. We want to get all of this melted really slowly and thoroughly combined. All of that caramel, no streaks, no little bits of those caramel pieces left in there before we add the marshmallows. Okay. And the reason we're going to do that is because if we added those in there and we let those cook for like 10 minutes, they're going to scorch and you're going to get that kind of burnt flavor to it. Okay. And we don't want that. We don't want that. We want that delicious, sweet vanilla marshmallowy flavor at the okay. end. So very, very patient. And then once all of that is melted, we'll dump all of those marshmallows in there and let it go over that low heat a little longer until it lightens up a little bit and we get a really, really creamy mixture. All right. The next step, Rice Krispies, delicious pieces, but we'll talk about that in our next bit. Okay, sounds good. So hopefully you have the patience to stick around with us for our 7 a.m. show where Lori will come back and then we'll be right back with more after this. Integris Health, partnering with people to live healthier lives. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. It is just about 624 on this Monday morning, and we've got a lot to cover in terms of our thunderstorm chances. Now, if you've been watching us, hopefully you are watching us regularly. You heard us mention this most of last week. This is how long out that it's been fairly evident that we're going to have some thunderstorm chances today and into tomorrow. We're going to start with today, and remember day one continues until 1 a.m., about 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. We have a low to elevated tornado threat, primarily across southeastern Kansas and into Oklahoma. We have a low to elevated hail risk and almost a carbon copy low to elevated wind risk with the elevated portions into Kansas and Oklahoma. So here's what we're looking at. Two potential rounds of strong to severe thunderstorms. Round one could be this evening between roughly 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. However, round one is going to be triggered by the dry line. Therefore, these are going to be more isolated to widely scattered in nature and therefore the threat will be limited to where those storms are. Now hail and wind, of course, the primary concerns here, but an isolated tornado or two cannot be ruled out. Then as we head overnight into tomorrow morning, that shift, that threat rather shifts off to the east. And so now our low to elevated risk almost reverses. It's almost like a mirror here. And that severe threat shifts into Missouri and Arkansas. This round will start about 1 a.m. with the greatest potential for stronger storms between roughly say 4 a.m. and 11 a.m on our Tuesday. So let's take a look at what we're talking about today. We're going to be mostly cloudy, if not plain old cloudy. We're also going to be very warm out there. The clouds are also going to have an impact on our storms this evening and into the overnight. They could limit storm development. They could potentially limit the severe risk. Now the ingredients are in place, so some strong to severe storms are still going to be possible, but the cloud cover could play a role as to how intense those storms are able to become. Here we are this evening at first round of storms scattered showers thunderstorms they clear out by nine then we go overnight the cold front begins to approach the region so we start to get a few more scattered showers and storms and as we go into tomorrow morning about the time we go on the air that cold front approaches and we're looking at a line of strong to severe thunderstorms that'll roll through 
and be done by about 11 o'clock in the morning. Then we'll clear out. We're going to warm up. It's going to be very breezy tomorrow. Gusts up to 40 miles an hour will be possible, and we could see a stray shower or storm in the evening tomorrow, but the severe threat should be significantly less by the evening hours. Quick look at temperature 64 in Joplin right now. South breeze at seven. Here's our ingredients. Dew point is at 60. Humidity is 87%. It's relatively muggy out there at temperatures around the region above average. We're in the low to mid 60s. Save Miami at 59, but still well above where we should be And check out. Check out Chanute sitting at 67 degrees. We're going to warm up quickly today and again, we're going to go mid, maybe even upper 80s in some locations. Mid 60s tonight, near 80 for our Tuesday and our Wednesday. And then we're going to start to see another system Thursday brings us some rain chances. It also brings us much cooler weather across the area as well. Even below average temperatures this weekend. Rain chances Saturday and next Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll start to warm up a bit as we head into next week. Now, switching over to Health Watch this morning, the Dobbs decision restricting abortion rights is leading more young people to have vasectomies and tubal ligation procedures. A study by the University of Pittsburgh and Boston University found the 2022 Supreme Court ruling led to a rise in permanent sterilization procedures among people ages 18 to 30. The increase was twice as large for women as opposed to men. People who eat a lot of seafood may face an increased risk of exposure to toxic forever chemicals known as PFAS. A study by Dartmouth found shrimp and lobster had the highest numbers of PFAS. The study's authors say we shouldn't avoid seafood as it can be healthy as long as it's eaten in moderation. A major study by Children's Hospital of Philadelphia found there is no link between COVID and childhood asthma. The study looked at 27,000 children and found that those who tested positive for COVID were no more likely to be diagnosed with asthma than those who weren't. Factors that do influence an asthma diagnosis include food allergies, preterm birth, race, and hay fever. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. We're back right after this. In the heart of Grove, Oklahoma. Need we say more? Sonic Garlic Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. The Southern Wildlife Society chapter hosted an outdoor education community day. Plus, we've got ourselves a warm and somewhat breezy day ahead of some thunderstorm chances this evening and overnight. We'll have the latest on that forecast to get you out the door coming up. And local furry friends, Pineapple Bliss. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It is now 631 on this Monday morning, April the 15th. I'm Chris Warner, so it is well above average out there this morning. Quite warm and quite humid. If you haven't stepped outside yet, if you do so, you, you can smell the rain. At least you could when I went out the door early this morning. It is quite muggy out there, and that's setting the stage for our strong, potentially severe thunderstorms both this evening and overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. We're going to start with today, though. First, a quick look outside from our camera at 7th and Range Line. Sunrise looking beautiful, but you see a few of those clouds up there. Those clouds continuing to increase from the west across the area, so some of our far western counties already going mostly cloudy, and all of us will eventually begin to do so. And that's the other factor here is the cloud cover we see today could play a role in the storms we see this evening and overnight. Now the stage is set for strong to severe thunderstorms, but the cloud cover could impact how many storms we see and just how severe they all, you know, ultimately get. Right now, though, here's what we're looking at. A low to elevated tornado risk, primarily across Kansas and Oklahoma, and then a low to elevated hail and wind risks, and these are almost copies of each other in the zones that they cover, with the higher risk for wind and hail across Kansas into Oklahoma. And remember, this covers until about 2 o'clock this morning, and then our severe threat will shift off to the east. This risk is going to end up running us between roughly, say, 5 and 9 p.m. this evening is what we're currently looking at, where we could see some scattered showers and storms. Now, these are going to be along the dry line, so they're going to be isolated to widely scattered, but the ones we see could become strong to severe. So we're going to keep a close eye on all of that for you. Right now, though, take a look at these temperatures, too. 64 in Joplin, 62 in Pittsburgh. Temperatures well above 
above where they should be across the entire region. Low to mid 60s. We're starting to see mid and even upper 60s out west. Miami Grove, the two cool spots, both sitting at 59. Chanute, the warm spot at 67. As kids get on the bus this morning, 63, partly cloudy, south breeze at around 5 to 10 miles an hour. And when that bus brings them back home this afternoon, mostly cloudy into just plain old cloudy skies. South breeze 10 to 15, occasional gusts to 25. The winds will really start to pick up later this afternoon into the evening hours. But look at that temperature, 86 degrees. We are looking at highs mid, potentially even upper 80s out there. And we're going to be mostly cloudy to just plain old cloudy. So again, that's going to be what plays a big factor in our storm chances this evening and overnight tonight. And then by this evening, we'll start to see a few of those, <coughs> excuse me, those scattered showers and thunderstorms begin to develop across the area ahead of round two, which is expected after midnight tonight. We'll talk about all that in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. To today's top stories, the spring turkey hunting season begins in Missouri, and if you plan to take part, there are some changes you need to know for this year. The hours of the hunt have changed slightly. You may now hunt until sunset on private lands. On public lands, shooting hours remain unchanged and end at 1 p.m. Permit prices have also increased. The Department of Conservation says it's uh, got to keep up with rising costs of goods and services. It's just a slight increase, and you're right, you know, people understand why this is being done. It's just keeping up with the cost of the times, and, you know, turkey hunting is great in Missouri, and people are more than willing to pay that little bit more to still enjoy great springtime, springtime activity. The turkey season runs for three weeks until May the 5th. And the Missouri Southern Wildlife Society chapter Saturday hosted an outdoor education community day. The students spent the day educating the community about nature and the world we live in. Attendees were able to hold live animals and participate in water sampling. It's seeing the excitement in the younger kids. Um, I was that young kid at one point and I had one specific biology event similar to this and that was what sparked the years that brought me to this conservation degree and the idea that I wanted to pursue wildlife management, things of that sort. Saturday's event was at the Missouri Southern Biology Pond located on the campus. Local businesses Saturday participated in a Pageapalooza Community Day. The purpose of the event is to help support Joplin small businesses. It included food trucks, local vendors, in-store specials, adoptable animals, and a lot more. More than 25 vendors participated in the event. I just want them to come and have a good time and see all of the small businesses in the area and help support us all because, I mean, why would you support someone else that you, doesn't even know you but maybe your family friend works in a small business and you could support them? The Community Day kicked off at 11 on Saturday morning and wrapped up around 3 in the afternoon. Downtown Joplin is a little bit more colorful. Saturday was the grand opening for the Keystone Gallery, which features art, photography, and jewelry. The gallery currently displays work from more than 20 local artists. Saturday, they help present their work, including one artist working live. The owners of the Keystone Gallery are photographers as well, who also display their work. They say they want to use art as a way to support and enrich the community, and you'll find them at 4th and Main in Joplin. Pineapple Bliss Saturday held a Dogs in the drive through event for local pups. Frozen Dessert Shop teamed up with the Joplin Humane Society for the event. Attendees that brought their furry friend received a free pup cup and bandana. All proceeds from Saturday's event went to the Joplin Humane Society. Well, it's important to get the dogs out of their kennels and into the public's eyes. Um, in a way that's more relaxing for the dogs where they can be more carefree and more themselves than being seen behind bars um, with a lot of anxiety. Um, and it's also really important to get donations from events like these because we are strictly ran off of donations. Pineapple Bliss is at 1021 East 20th Street in Joplin. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. Samsung has knocked Apple out of the top spot for smartphone makers, at least for now. Plus, we are keeping an eye on thunderstorm chances this evening and overnight. We'll have another look at your forecast and what to expect coming up. You're watching the KOA Morning News. We'll be right back.
In Consumer Watch this morning, it's tax day. You've got just hours left to file a return or request an extension. Otherwise, you might end up paying a fee. It could climb to 25% of the taxes you owe if you wait too long. Amy Kiley reports on how to file or get an extension quickly. Fastest way to get your refund is to electronically file and to receive that refund through a direct deposit. It's not too late to file a tax return or request more time. Some people automatically get an extension. Residents of Maine, Massachusetts, and Washington, D.C. have an extra day or two for observed holidays. People who live or work in federally declared disaster areas can check their deadlines at irs.gov. It's possible to request an automatic six-month extension for free through an IRS partner on the agency's website. The deadline for that is today, and it involves paying estimated taxes. For those who want to file before midnight tonight... The IRS this year is attempting a direct file with multiple states. People not in direct file states can check out the IRS's trusted partners. Those with an adjusted gross income of $79,000 or less can file with them for free. Others can use paid services. Experts urge taxpayers to enter information correctly. Something as simple as just you know, fat fingering your social security number, you know, could really cause you a headache. Watch out for scams. If you didn't initiate that contact, go to the source. And avoid late fees. Sometimes people get scared and they're like, oh my goodness, I owe money, I'm not going to file. And for that, we really encourage people, go ahead and file. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. If you know you're due for a refund, you have some wiggle room. The failure to file penalty won't apply to you. Well, Samsung has knocked out, uh, knocked Apple rather out of the top spot for smartphone makers, at least for now, according to research firm IDC. The company's report shows that smartphone shipments rose nearly 8% for the first quarter of 2024, with Samsung taking over 20% of that share. Meanwhile, Apple shipments dropped 10%. Well, several companies are offering taxpayers a break to mark today's deadline to file income taxes. Krispy Kreme customers who buy a dozen original glazed donuts can get a second dozen for just the price of their state's sales tax. California Pizza Kitchen is offering diners $10 off a $40 purchase. And Grubhub is offering the first 1,000 customers who use the code TAXBREAK $15 off of deliveries totaling $25 or more. And the film Civil War, about a fictional conflict in a dystopian U.S., claimed the top spot at the domestic box office over the weekend, raking in more than $25 million, teaming up of two mythical monsters in Godzilla X, uh, or X-Kong, the new empire, dropped to number two in its third weekend with more than $15 million in North America, while Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, the sequel to the latest reboot of the franchise, grabbed the third spot with just over $5 million. And that Civil War one certainly looks interesting. I definitely want to check that out. You should too. That's uh, it for Consumer Watch. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about that forecast rather quickly, and then we'll go into detail here in just a moment. This is a live look from our camera on the Cornell Complex, downtown Joplin. As you can see, clouds continuing to increase this morning across the air. another view of those clouds looks pretty though for sure but these clouds will continue to thicken up across the area again we have that severe risk across the area as well we have the low to elevated tornado risk primarily into kansas and oklahoma low to eight elevated hail and wind risks with the elevated risk into parts of kansas and oklahoma and this is what we're going to talk about again in detail so don't worry about those storm chances this is really for round one which is expected this evening say between five and nine that's going to be isolated to widely scattered and we'll see another round overnight tonight again I'm going to go into detail about this here in just a moment. Right now, 64 in Joplin, 61 in Pittsburgh. So temperatures well above where they should be. <clears throat> Excuse me. All of us now back into the low to mid 60s, even some upper 60s a little further west. Miami Grove coming back in the low 60s as well. Kids getting on the bus. Quick check. 63, partly cloudy. South breeze 5 to 10. And then by this afternoon, mostly cloudy to plain old cloudy. But look at that. 86, south breeze 10 to 15, gusts to 25. We're going to have another detailed look at your forecast in just a moment. It's also just about time to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Those are after the break, but first let's see what's happening on CBS Mornings. 
Hello to you. I'm Gail Kane coming right up on CBS Mornings. David Begner went to school for a lesson in friendship. So he's got the story of a little nine-year-old girl who forged a heartwarming bond with an unlikely best friend. We like the picture already where that's going. That's coming right up on CBS Mornings. All right, time for some Monday birthdays here in the four states, and we're going to begin in Southwest City with Miguel Viatoro Jr. celebrating birthday number 12, and it says here, Happy Birthday, we love you from Mama, Sissy, Frankie, and Grandma. And we've got Robbie Wyrick celebrating birthday number 30 over in Seneca, says he's an amazing husband and father to his six children. We all love you. Enjoy your day. And Jessica Kennedy, she's the woman on the far right, celebrating birthday number 45 in Goodman. A very happy birthday to you, Jessica. In Jasper, Laura Earl, celebrating birthday number 46. And I hope that uh, Laura is celebrating a very fantastic birthday. There she is, a happy birthday to you. And as we shift, shift gears over to Chanute, Rhonda McMillan, Celebrating birthday number 60. A very happy birthday to you, Rhonda. I love that outfit. Looks very festive. In Grove, Chris Norris is celebrating birthday number 70. Very happy birthday to you, Chris. And Sandy Stanley celebrating another year wiser. A very happy birthday going out to Sandy. And in Joplin, very exciting, Kyler and Shelby Dryling celebrating their first year of Wedded Bliss. And I'm sure that they are looking forward to many more to come. Happy anniversary to the Drylings. And our list continues with Kenny Corden in Chanute celebrating birthday number 96. A very happy birthday to you, says he's a Korean War veteran. And Kenny, we thank you for your service. And last but certainly not least, we've got Beth Kistner celebrating another year wiser. Says happy birthday from your Texas family. All right, that was a pretty fantastic list of birthdays and anniversaries here in the four states. And of course, if you want to celebrate with us, all you need to do is submit your birthdays and or anniversaries to birthdays, that's with an S, at koamnewsnow.com. And make sure that uh, you meet the deadlines, which you will progressively see eventually on your screen. Maybe not. It's one of those days. It could go either way here. It's Monday, it's technology, and it's Monday. But those deadlines down there, make sure you meet them to make sure your birthday and anniversary happens on the right time. All right, let's talk about that severe threat that we've got going on for us. Recap, this is for day one, which again continues until about two o'clock tomorrow morning. Low to elevated tornado threat, Kansas and Oklahoma. Low to elevated hail and wind risk across the entire area with the higher risk into Kansas and Oklahoma. Again, this is initially for dry line storms that are expected possibly this evening between roughly five and nine. And these are gonna be isolated to widely scattered because they're along the dry line. These are those ones that can turn into supercells. Therefore, they're in an environment in which they could become strong to severe with hail and wind being the primary concern, but an isolated tornado or two is not out of the question. This threat then begins to shift to the east for our Tuesday. If you look at this, it is almost a mirror as we go into Tuesday, where we have the low to elevated risk just swap. Now it's in the most of Missouri and Arkansas. We're expecting the cold front, which will be behind the dry line to overtake that dry line overnight tonight and by tomorrow morning set off additional strong potentially severe showers and thunderstorms for the first half of our Tuesday. So let's take a look on the future track at what this looks like. Now today, this is the other important factor. Today we're looking to be mostly cloudy, if not even in some cases just plain old cloudy out there. The atmosphere is set. We've been talking about this severe risk for several days now. The atmosphere is set for strong to potentially severe storms. The cloud cover, though, could have an impact on how many storms we see and just how severe they can get. But any storms we do see will be in an environment where they can become strong to severe. We're also going to be unseasonably warm. So here's that first round Monday or this evening. This is Monday of those strong, potentially severe storms. They're done by about nine. We get a pause. We even may even see some clearing skies briefly before we see round two overnight tonight after 1 a.m. 
Scattered showers and thunderstorms. Here we are at the start of the KOA morning news at 5 a.m. Scattered showers and storms, some of which could be strong, potentially severe. And then that cold front starts working in about 7, 8 o'clock, and that'll bring a, a line of showers and storms that could be strong to severe that'll roll through the area and should be out of here by about noon on Tuesday with the possibility of a few stray showers in the evening, but those would not be strong or severe. They're not expected to be as uh, the severe threat should wind down by the afternoon and evening hours. All right, we have more on your forecast, including the seven day as well as the news you need to know here in just a moment. And when we make the switch over to Fox 14 at seven, we're going to see how Congress is honoring women who answered the call during World War II. Here's a check of today's top headlines the news you need to know before you head out the door. Around 20 train cars went off the tracks in Wyandotte Saturday evening. The derailment blocked Main Street and East 153rd Road in Wyandotte. No one was hurt in the crash. Numerous area agencies responded to help. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly vetoes a bill to ban gender affirming care for transgender youth. The bill would restrict the use of puberty blockers, which trans minors may use to delay the development of gendered characteristics. However, the Republican controlled House and Senate may have the votes to override the veto. And Saturday was the grand opening of the Keystone Gallery, which features art, photography, and jewelry. Gallery, the gallery currently displays more uh, work from more than 20 local artists. Saturday, they help present their work, including one artist working live. The owners say they want to use art as a way to support and enrich the community. And that is a check of your top headlines. News you need to know before you head out the door. Quick check of that forecast. Again, today, well above average. We're going to go into the mid, even upper 80s. Cl mostly cloudy to just plain old cloudy. Cloudy. Winds out of the south start gusting around 25 this evening. We could see a few scattered to isolated thunderstorms across the area between 5 and 9. Some of those could be strong, potentially severe. We'll keep an eye on that for you. And then after 1 a.m., another round of strong, potentially severe thunderstorms between the best risk is or the higher risk rather is between 4 and 11 a.m. and mid 60s tonight. Looking ahead, take a look at this. We're still 80 tomorrow. Thunderstorms should wrap up by about noon or one o'clock tomorrow near 80 Wednesday. We're cooler heading into the weekend with more rain on Thursday and Saturday and we'll warm back up again next week back into the 70s and near 80 by Wednesday. And coming up today at noon, we're making billionaire bars in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. And your morning news continues on KOAM with CBS Mornings. College mega stars Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese have made headlines throughout their college careers. Ahead on CBS Mornings, a preview of tonight's historic WNBA draft and find out where they may be headed for the rookie seasons. Or you can stick with us. We're on Fox 14, where your only local morning news continues. And of course, it's tax day. We have some tips and tricks when it comes to filing an extension and our our favorite Lori Horton back in the studio to help finish up those copycat star crunch treats. Don't want to miss it. That's going to wrap it up for us for now. Be back here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. and again at noon.